ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفاء حفة من النار فأنقلكم منها My dear respectful brothers and sisters Today the topic is uh, the issue that you can understand it by understanding the first which I have begun my talk and uh, why I have chosen is that when I was entering the masjid uh, it was actually last week in the Friday sermon when I was coming and I'm talking this masjid actually when I was just at the door I met with a brother who was in a kind of in hesitation whether he gets inside the masjid or not he was there and he asked me brother do you know about this masjid I, so I said yes I know him and do you sure the, this jama'ah is good I said yes I'm sure then he said, I'm, it is, my khutbah is about to, the time is, I have very less time, and I don't have the time to go to Mr. Dante's masjid, but I'm, I'm in doubt of this masjid. Why? Because I think they are not selfish. Um, then I'm like, okay, so this masjid, I'm sure they are selfish. Yes, I'm sure, I said to him. He said, make sure because I know some masjidis even though the Jama'a they claim they are Salafis they even Shias pray with them so then I confessed him I said I'm sure 100% come in and he came in and then today I made my khutbah in that topic my dear brothers and sisters today we are on the first of fierce bits to destroy ourselves for one issue that is dividing among ourselves into groups, sects, cults, and so and so. And this is really very, very horrible. It's so horrific. We are in this situation where we see the division and sectism is something which is even acceptable to Islam. That is where we are in, at, up to that level. So um, when you ask some brothers and sisters, they would say nowadays what became very common is to say, yes, it is uh, to be divided into groups, it's okay in Islam. Prophet Muhammad has already projected that, and it's there. Um, okay. They usually refer to one hadith to strengthen their justification. <coughs> that hadith is in which uh, the hadith which was narrated by Abu Huraira is in uh, Muslims, uh, uh, Ahmed, and also many other kutubis uh, of the hadith. So that hadith is the one that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was reported that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, افترقت اليهود على إحدى وسبعين فرقة وافترقت النصارى 
على 72 فرقة وستستفرق أمتي إلى 73 فرقة كلهم في النار إلا واحدة The hadith is saying that the church divided the religion into uh, 71 sectors. And the Christians divided into 72 sectors. And the believers, this Ummah of Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will divide their religion into 73, 73 sectors. But all those seven, 73 sects will end up to hellfire except one. So today, do you see that we are in 73 sects? If you come in any, any district where, where you are in the world, there is more than 73 sects of Muslims today. But each one says, only one of them will go to paradise and then everybody says I'm that one every group says I'm that one within that group <coughs> if they talk to each other definitely they will split it into two, three, four, five and each sect, each cult, each ten people will divide into more and more until we stand on one by one so everybody believes that it's only he or she who is going to go to Jannah. That's our division today, uh, where we are. And we see the consequence. I think I don't need to mention about the consequence. It's very obvious. And so that division, let's just let me highlight the hadith. I'm not here to talk about that hadith, it has a lot of discussion, but just to pinpoint it, is that, first of all, is the question, there's a question on the authenticity of the hadith, whether it is authentic or not, there's a question mark. And many ulama have already talked about it, both muhadithir and fuqaha. And to, uh, to ensure it is authenticity, there are two ways to look at it. And you know it is the matni and senet. To look at the gen of the narration, those who narrated the hadith, and also to look at the wording of the hadith, how that sentence is. Is it something which possibly Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, or is it fabricated? When you look at that way, there are many ulamas who um, put questions on each of the matni or and seven. And also use the other way, the logic. Okay, use even, say the hadith is, is uh, sarif. If you take it, it is sarif, then we misunderstood it also. Is it possible that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ordering us or telling us about our division and he is still happy with that. No, it is opposite. It is that he is telling us that the, uh, this hadith is just a warning to tell us should not to be divided. Not to be divided. That's the whole point of the hadith. Provided it is sahih, then the, uh, the question it is the opposite of the way we understood it today. It's to avoid anything that could lead us to division. So this hadith has a lot of discussion, but now let me come to my point. There are tens of ayahs of the Quran that are contradictory to division and sectism and cultism. Those are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, which shows even the Prophet Muhammad said in this hadith, Ummati, so the, the Ummati will be divided into 73. But when he says Ummati, that means that Ummah, uh, all of them are Muslims and they are going to Jannah. But Allah says in the Quran, Inna farraku wa kanu shay'an 
plus the name of the Shaykh. Those who divided their religions into sects and groups by identifying themselves as sect so and so, you have nothing to do with them. Nothing. You, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu you have nothing to do with them. That means they are not your ummah. So anyone who call themselves as a sect or so and so, they are not the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's very clear. You must be stick to being Muslim. And then Allah said, إِنَّ مَا أَمْحُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنَبِّهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Their case will be called by Allah and Allah will count to them. Then it's very clear. In that way we understand the division is distraction. Division is distraction. As we usually say, united we will become successful and divided we, become, we, we are failures. It is simply that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned about this thing of division in many many verses in the Quran. And that is why Allah is always telling us to be united and unity all the Islamic pillars, fundamentals and pillars and principles of Islam are all about unity. If you address prayers, making self, all that is about unity. Fasting is about unity. And the Eid festivals are all about unity. Charity is all about unity. Going to Hajj is all about unity. Everything about in the, in the Islam is uh, leading you to unity. But we are divided to the worst level now. Where it is very, very rare to get one family who are on the same page, one family members. We see our one family member, they are divided into three or four sets. <coughs> we went to the last stage now, and we are paying the price already. My dear brothers and sisters, every day when we want to stand for prayer, congregational prayer, we come to the first step. The Imam says, <coughs> You know the meaning of those wordings, that's hadith. The Prophet Muhammad is saying, straighten your lines and do not disagree like one is going forward and the other one is going backward. Don't be like that. So if you disagree on the line, your hearts will disagree. So you will not be united. Making a self side by side, shoulder to shoulder, feet to feet, that is the unity. And even squeezing each other is the unity. Where you touch the one you hate so much is touching your body. Or the one you were undermining is touching your body like this, is squeezing you. So the unity starts from there. That unity, when we show the external division or external dislikeness, then it automatically goes to heart deficient. That was a physical, then it becomes mental deficient. That we hate each other and we create hatred and enmity, and emotion comes just like that. My dear respectful brothers and sisters, we have to re reflect upon the Quran and the authentic Sunnah, which are almost 90% we can say it is taking us to unity. What we call Tawheed, when we, when we uh, testify the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to also testify that we are also one. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah is saying in this verse of the Quran, Verily, 
the religion of yours, the religion of yours, is a single religion, and I am the I am your only Lord, who is one. So worship me alone. Worship me alone. But people divide their their religion into sectors and groups and cultures between them. But later on, to us, they will all they shall all return to me. That's what Allah is saying. And then whoever shall do good deeds, provided he or she is a believer, his endeavor will not be rejected. And Allah is saying, we are recording it for him. Everything is in the record. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us here is that our Allah, our Lord, our Lord is one. And our religion is one. And we should be one Ummah. Not 10,000 divisions. One thing which is questionable is that this hadith which tells us about 73 sects, many ulama, they were talking about it and they said, and this, the division of this hadith, now we have all the 73. So the Qiyamah is very close. So we have those 73 <coughs> and sect, uh, this one and this one and this one and this one. By the time that Sheikh finishes the book, another 10 sects comes up. And another, again, every year there are tens of new sects coming up. So it's uncomfortable. Some sects exist in one place where they do not exist in other places. Some sects die, they don't exist anymore. Before we used to, we, we know that there's, uh, there were Chahmiya, and all those in the, those uh, jamaat and sectors that existed before, they died now. There are new ones now. To the level where we have reached anyone who is the enemy of Muslims, just to claim that he or she is a Muslim and destroy whatever they want, and in the name of Islam. Like we see ISIS today. They have hijacked our religion and they are doing the opposite of our religion. So that to put uh, our religion into this issue of being uh, into shame and destruction, they cannot, they are trying to, <coughs> this, to turn off the light of Allah. Yuriduna and Allah, They are trying to turn off the nur or the light of Allah, but Allah is completing his light. My dear, respectful brothers and sisters, our problem starts from sectism, kumbhism. And our religion is completely opposite of division, sectism and all that. Our name is Muslim, and our religion is Islam, and our Allah is Allah, and our prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that's it. If you look at all the, Islam, the Islamic teachings, all of them are teaching you like that. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. My dear respectful brothers and sisters, it's unfortunate that today we are in this division. And we don't even realize in our time when we are alive, we see, I've named one of the sects before that I said Salafia. But even, sorry if this one is hurting anybody. See, even you picked up Salafia or Sufia. Each one is divided. While I was still in, in my experience, it has been divided into tens and tens. Today you see Salafia of Saruriya, Madkhaliya, Rabi'iya, Salafia al Salafia al-Qadim. You name it, it's counting. And for sure, within the coming two, three years, you may see new ones. The same applies to Sufia, Tablighi. Whatever we call ourselves, it will not stay in one spot. It will be 
dividing into groups and so on. So that's continuation. It is something which has no limit. Why are you identifying yourself to something which is not even stable, which is already flowing and dying and dividing into more and more? That means you are not thinking about the one which is fixed. That is Islam. And to call yourself as Muslim, your identification is Muslim, period. And when you stay in that position, that you reflect upon the verse of the Quran, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَأَنَّ هَذَا سِرَابِ مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُ السُّلُولًا And indeed, this is my way, and this is the right way. So follow this, follow me this way. That's the Quran. And then Allah is saying, do not follow the other ways, other small streams. Do not follow them because they will lead you away from this right path. So if you follow the small paths of the shayadim, they will take you away, away from the right path. And we should always think about that. And how do we avoid this? How, the, this is very easy. First of all, when you identify yourself as a sect of group so and so, and you believe they are the Firqat uh, Najiya, your group, everybody believes that this group is the Firqat Najiya, the one who is, will be saved from the hellfire. Then what you are coming to, that belief, by believing so and identifying yourself into sects, you are already opening the window of calamity, the window of destruction, the window of division. And when you open that window, when you say it verbally and act upon it, then you have already opened the door. And then the fitna comes there. The fitna comes into your heart and comes to your society. And then after that time, when you, when you start talking about other sects, and, and reminding them, insulting them, then what comes, you have already opened the gate of the fitna. And that's where, now we have already opened the gate, but we can close it, it's very easy. Let me take the uh, very clear example of, I think here, because many students are here, in every, year, every university in the North America, there is what uh, we call MSA, Muslim Student Association. In the Muslim Student Association, you see those who are my sisters who have <coughs> do not wear the hijab or the niqab are secluded. They, are, they were put aside. So usually they were pushed aside by either undermining or ignoring them or uh, rejecting them. What they do? The brothers, those who do not grow their beard also same. They were secluded and they were pushed aside. And what happens to them? Every human being, they want to join a group. They will simply they join to this um, associations of priest associations. Some of them join the associations of other religions, even Christian association and Buddha association. They join, even though they identify themselves as Muslims. Very simple. I know some students who because they cannot go along with the Muslim Student Association, they are in the club of uh, Yogo and uh, those other things of which are, are based on religion. So who is who is now uh, making that division? Who is obstacle to the uh, spread of Islam? Who rejects Islam to be spread in all over? It is only the Muslims. So we should only blame ourselves, and not others. Whatever is happening to us, it is what we, are, we have already um, we cultivated these things which are happening to us. My dear respectful brothers and sisters, the topic is too long, but very simply, let, it, let me conclude with this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Wala tanaz'u fatafshalu wa tadhaba rihukum. Allah is saying, do not divide into your, yourself into groups. Do not divide your religion into sects, and do not argue among yourselves so that you will, you will end up to being a failures 
وتذهب إلى القرآن and your power will be destroyed and you will not have any power. Once you split into groups, then you have no power at all. And what happens is that then you will end up to the worst situation in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned about the case of Fir'aun when Allah is saying إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ عَلَى فِي الْأَرْضِ وَجْعَلْ أَهْلَهَا شِيعًا يَسْتَضْعِفُ ضَعِفَةً مِنْهُمْ يُذَبِّقُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَيَسْتَحْلِي مِسَاعَهُمْ Indeed, Fir'aun elevated himself in this world and the earth and he divided the residents of that area into sects and groups and clans and after that when he did all that just one of those groups he started oppressing them and when you oppress then he he started putting their boys into death slaughtering them and is wearing the female young girls. That's what, that's one of the things that he was doing, because it's called divide and rule. So divide and rule, or divide and conquer, existed during uh, it's for all who is doing that. And today the situation is the same thing. History repeats itself. The same thing is going on. And it is very clear that we are destroying our homes, we are destroying ourselves, and we are going against the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by creating all those decisions. And also thinking about other non-Muslims, they see uh, the Muslims, they took their actions, and what people are doing, they think it's a religion. Therefore, we need to differentiate between the culture and religion between behavior uh, and the religion, between personal attitude and the religion, between political um, influence and the religion, between the economic and the religion, and between the group who, who wants maybe have another agenda and the religion. You have to see the religion is simply as that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, وَأَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا the meaning shortly is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying hold all, all together hold the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not divide among yourself and remember the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you when you were an uh, enemy one to one another and you the hatred was there and when you were and you were at the first or at the edge of the fiery pit of home that you were falling into it and he saved you from it so we remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become united become one Muslim become one nation and like one person that's what we want. And that starts from every one of us to, to remove from his or her mind being a sect but, and to replace it being a Muslim. And considering anyone who is praying as Muslim, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how to come to that. Uh,